Do they do that in the NBA draft? Are they drafting for potential, like what they think they could become or what they uh, – I, I think the game is changing now. The game is changing. The first five picks, maybe ten picks, you know, teams may draft for as like potential. But now since the addition – of the play-in tournament, mm. it has completely changed the, the, the whole game of the huh. draft. What do you mean? Like, because now, you know, you got to, more teams have an opportunity to make the postseason. So those teams that has been knocking at the door, right, they may take a... Better player now. They, they may take a, a a Herb Jones, right, like that we're seeing a, a three-year college player, right, mm. that could come in and fit and be a role player. And especially with all these mm. little, think about this for a second. The game. Hey, has, that's that's really deep. That's really yeah. deep. The, yeah. the game has changed in the NBA because of the new CBA, right? And you have you know, the uh, you know the first the first apron or whatever that is, right? All these rules where you can't have that many max guys mm -hmm. under you know under salary, and so now, you know. These GMs are looking for, for for certain college players that could come in and play right away that's going to fit. Cheap, too. Right? That has old souls. And they're cheap, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're it, not going to be mad but, but But let's be honest. Right now, when you think about it, in America, we, we're we so far behind the eight ball. Like, internationals, international players are taking over the game of basketball. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Period. There's no other way around. Like, that's a real conversation taking place right now, right? Hell, yeah. Like, we're playing catch up. Like, right now... Seven, uh, yeah, seven out of the top ten players are international players. How come? It's because are they like soccer? They have clubs. Well, I, I think it's the development. Mm -hmm. It's the development, right? How they how they are like you know their culture when it comes down to the way that they they train, their, their mindset. And if I'm a GM, and this this is a real conversation, if I'm a general manager, and I'm looking at international players and I'm looking at American players and I'm saying, you know what? I'm going to take a gamble on this seven-footer international player, right, that's skilled or that's athletic. And he may be a raw talent right now, but history has shown us when you look at Giannis Antetokounmpo, when you look at Jokic, when you look at Luka, right, those guys all have something in common. They're married. They show up to work every day. Mm -hmm. They compete at a high level. Gratitude, and, probably. And you could trust them. Gratitude, probably. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like very you could, you could trust them. We don't, we don't, we're mm -hmm. not reading anything about Jokic and Giannis getting to, you know, altercations or anything outside of the lines. Like, we're not reading anything about those guys. Shea Gillis at uh, SGA from Oklahoma City, mm -hmm. you know, from Canada. Like, these guys are setting a high bar. Wimby. And Wimby. Yeah. True professional. Think about Victor Wimbiamba. He came on our show and talked about the universe. Yes. The, yeah. but, but think about it. A rookie with that much height, he goes down to Summer League, and when he left Summer League, he could have went anywhere, right? Like and said, hey, Pop, I see you at training camp. He went back to San Antonio, put on 12 pounds of muscle, started working. In, like that, That's like this is how he was brought up. Yeah. So we're playing catch up. When it comes down to America, it's a, it's a wild thought, like that, you know, because we see the videos of what those international games are like too, with flares, yeah, and yeah. flags, like and soccer teenagers bikes. going yeah. through it, mm -hmm. and it's like. Then we saw, I think I saw the gym that Giannis was training in in yeah. a documentary. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, it's like the the gratitude is also, but also the experience of not getting shook. Like we had people throwing fire at us when I was growing yeah. up, 15, 16 year olds. Now you're going into Utah and you got some chirpy Mormon. Yeah. Like that's not that <laughs> big mm -hmm. of a deal. It's like, it is interesting how life experiences can definitely shape how you are and who you are. Work ethic too, another yeah. big massive. They're not saying anybody doesn't have it, but it's yeah. like, feels like if you're trying to get out of things or going through things, you're going to be mature at a lot younger age. That Wemby thing, mm -hmm. when he when we heard him talk about the universe, yeah. all this other shit, we're like, damn, this guy's it, a 90-year-old man. Right. Everybody, everybody in the NBA, you know, in the next three years, they need to go ahead and try to win their defensive player of the year awards, the MVP, <laughs> because they're going to resign in San Antonio with Victor Wembanyama. Mm -hmm. He's going to own that. He's going to be the best player in the league on both sides of the floor. Like in hey, Shohei Otani, let's make sure his interpreter 
and he yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. 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 let's make sure there, he, he speaks about eight languages <laughs> okay, yeah. no, that's good yeah. so, that's good news yeah. that we won't get caught up in anything but I do appreciate that OGs are saying this about Wemby too because wasn't there a little bit of a conversation early with him down at Spurs like the teammates seemingly were a little bit jealous of maybe yeah Wemby? it was like the Luka Doncic situation in Dallas like where they had to completely rehaul the team because they weren't really using him as he needed to be used well they and, do that and I call it short term memory because you got to ask yourself, if you're on Victor Wimbiamba team and you were on the San Antonio Spurs last year, how many televised games did you mm. actually get? I think it was two. Yeah, yeah probably. Right? Like, so I understand it. And look, all young fellas go through this where you have these national televised games and they, they, they oh. think it's their moment to actually show the world who they are, right? You got your family members that's tuned in, friends tuned in, whatever. But you always got to go back to say, why do we have these national televised games? Damn it, it is not because of you. <laughs> <laughs> nope. It's because of the alien. Yeah. That's the alien it's right there. It's because of him. And it's, and it's the same thing with Luca. Like, you, you need to be appreciating these guys. Doc Rivers had a conversation with me when I was young, and he was, when I was, you know, on that 2008 Celtic team. Hell yeah. And I was getting outside of my damn body, right? Like, I was starting to complain, like, you know, hey, Told me the ball a little bit more. So one morning I come in, he's like, come meet me in my office. He was like, do you know why you starting to get attention? It's not. And Ray Allen, mm -hmm. you need to embrace that and appreciate it. And it was a real thing. Like it was the truth. Did it click at that moment or did it take a little bit for it to settle in? No, it clicked. Oh, okay. Yeah, clear. He's a good right coach. Yeah. 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 That's oh, a good yeah. point. Perkins, right. Now, now that you mentioned yeah. that, yeah. Very yeah. coachable, Perkins. I understand mm -hmm. how this whole thing goes. I appreciate that.